Before the fall, man lived with the animals, including the dinosaurs, in the Garden of Eden. After the fall, man was evicted from the Garden of Eden and had to work for his living. He multiplied and spread out to fill the earth. Because man became wicked, God decided to send a flood to cleanse the earth from man. God chose Noah and his three sons and their wives to replenish the earth. He showed them how to build an ark which was big enough to contain two of every kind of animal on earth. Prior to the flood, animals lived in harmony with man. But after the flood, animals became fearful of man. Prior to the flood, most of the earth was covered with trees. And animals lived longer and grew bigger. This could have been because the earth had a stronger magnetic field and was protected from ionizing radiation by the waters above the firmament and the atmosphere was richer. Man and dinosaurs coexisted and most likely Noah would have taken some of the baby dinosaurs onto the ark. There is considerable evidence that man and dinosaurs have lived together throughout history after the flood. What's more, the flood provides a much better scientific explanation for the many fossils and geological landforms that we find today. Once Noah and the animals were safely in the ark, God caused the fountains of the deep to break open and rain to pour from heaven for 40 days. The earth's magnetic field is declining rapidly. In Noah's day, it would have been very strong. Much of the water that flooded the earth came through cracks in the earth's surface from subterranean reservoirs. The amount of water released was enough to cover the highest mountains on the earth's surface. It was cataclysmic greater than any flood or tsunami that has ever been experienced. So much so that the earth's surface was totally changed. Mountains rose up, valleys formed, water rushed into the valleys forming oceans, land was torn up and redeposited animals were buried and become fossilized ice precipitated at the north and south pole instantly freezing thousands and thousands of mammoths and so explains why we find animal fossils in layers the fossil fuels that we extract from the earth today were formed by the rapid burial of millions and millions of animals at the time of the flood. The enormous coal seams that we find on the earth today are the result of the rapid burial of forests at the time of the flood. Massive coal seams can be found at the North and the South Pole and under the ocean, indicating that 
At one time there were trees growing there. There is no explanation other than the flood. What's more, giant petrified clams have been found on the top of our highest mountain, Mount Everest, indicating that Mount Everest was once below the oceans. Not all scientists would agree that this is the way the geological layers and the fossils that we find today came to be. In the 18th and 19th century, people like James Hutton, Charles Lyell and Charles Darwin began to suggest that the layers of the earth that we find today were formed over millions and millions of years, perhaps even billions of years. They suggest that the animal fossils that we find in these layers gradually evolved from primitive life forms over millions or billions of years. The time scale of the geological column was calculated in the early 19th century based on sedimentation rates long before carbon dating ever came into existence. What's more, the age of fossils as calculated by Darwin based on the geological layer in which the fossil was found was used to calibrate carbon dating. What's more, the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere is not constant, it is rising. And so, carbon dating inevitably will grossly overestimate the age of a fossil. In a circular type of reasoning, some scientists use fossils to work out how old a layer is, and then use layers to work out how old the fossil is. In short, man does not have any reliable way of calculating the age of fossils and layers.